Hello, my name is Teresa Croy. I'm a naturalist with the Dorothy Pico Nature Center located in uh, the northwest corner of Sioux City, Iowa. Our building is located in the Les Hills of Iowa, which is an incredible land formation and has very unique prairie habitat and wildlife. Our main focus of the Nature Center is to help teach people about the plants and animals and of course that special habitat. I'd like to take you on a brief tour of the building itself and hope that you can come visit sometime on your own to see our amazing trails and wonderful exhibits that we have here. Now I would like to teach you a little bit about one of our special educational animals that resides here at the Dorothy Pico Nature Center. This is Harlan. He is a permanently injured barred owl. Um, he was hit by a car when he was hunting in the town of Harlan, Iowa, hence his name. He was rescued by some people and taken to SOAR, which is an organization called Saving Our Avian Resources. There they were able to take some x-rays and take care of him medically and realize that his humerus, that's the bone between the elbow and the shoulder, was broken. Since birds' bones are hollow, they do not heal as well as people's bones do. And he can now not fly as well as he should be able to. He can fly from branch to branch, but he is unable to get himself up off of the ground out in the wild. And on the ground is not a safe place for Harlan to be. So now we take care of him here at the Nature Center. SOAR, um, is their ultimate goal is to return birds back into the wild and they care for raptors of all sorts, everything from eagles, owls, falcons, vultures, and hawks. So if, if she does not have room to keep them there as an educational animal or ambassador, then they are passed on to other nature centers such as ourselves. So Harlan has some very, very unique features being an owl. One, the barred owl is a little bit different than most of the other owls. In Iowa and in the Midwest in general, there are roughly nine species of owls. You can see some of those other ones behind me. Those are unfortunately birds that did not survive their accidents or possibly just died of old age. So there are winter visitors such as the snowy owl and the short-eared and long-eared owl. And then in comparison, we have our year-round residents that are pretty common such as the screech owl, barred owl like Harlan, and the great horned owl. Those are probably the three most common that we see, and all of these have some great adaptations for being nocturnal hunters. The barred owl, like I mentioned, is a little bit different because he has very dark colored eyes, 
Whereas the rest of the owls have that yellow or orangey iris. Some say that this is a, has a little bit to do with when they actually hunt. Obviously owls are more nocturnal, but it is believed that potentially the barred owl hunts earlier in the evening and then very early in the morning. So he's not maybe a true nocturnal bird in comparison to some of the other owls. I'm not sure, you'd have to do your own research. All right, so if we take a look at him, we can see he does have very, very large eyes in comparison to the size of his body. His eyes are fixed in position. As you saw, he turned his head. He likes to turn so that he can see things all around him. I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to get him to do that for me today. You can turn back and forth. If you take a circle that's 360 degrees, he can turn his head 270 out of those degrees. So he cannot go all the way around, but he can go most of the way. So that is um, that has to do with those eyes being fixed in place. So he needs to be able to turn his head to see things a little bit better. Owls also have more rods in their eyes. There are two different parts that help us see, the rods and the cones. So owls have more rods than they do cones. The cones help us to see color and the rods are gonna help you see um, variations of light, All right? So that's another reason why he can see so well at night and hunt for his prey. You can see him opening his beak a little bit there. He may clack once in a while. I think he's a little crabby today. I'm not sure he got enough sleep or I woke him up from his nap. So he will open and close that sometimes when he's afraid or maybe he needs to cool himself off or he just may want to sound scary. Okay, he has a yellow, light yellow colored beak. Most of our other owls have a black or brown beak. Let's see what else is unique about his face. You can see, um, those feathers that surround his eyes kind of stick out and make the shape of a bowl that helps to actually carry the sound into his ears, which you cannot see. His ears are located underneath all of his feathers. He doesn't have um, a flap or feathers for his ears. It's just that opening in his skull that helps him to hear things. Owls are very good at hearing things and it's one of the main ways they hunt for their food is they will sit and perch and listen for where that prey is coming from. Some of our larger birds like the barred owl could even catch a small raccoon or possum or maybe even a skunk. Now the barred owl would have to go after a young one and it wouldn't matter that it was stinky because he cannot smell. Pretty amazing, right? You may be able to see when Harlan blinks, he has an extra eyelid there. It kind of has a gray color and comes diagonally instead of straight up and down. That helps to clean and protect his eye, especially if he were to hunt outdoors. All right, let's take a look. I'm gonna see if you can see his talons there. Since Harlan is permanently injured, we do have anklets on his feet and Jess's and a leash when we get him out of his enclosure as he forgets that he can't fly very well sometimes and tries to get away. We don't want him to re-injure himself, so we always keep him tethered to our hand. His talons are what we call his feet. He has those long, sharp claws you can see you how he can kind of fly. All right, so, and he has feathers that come mostly all the way down to the ends of his toes. That helps to keep his feet warm at night. His feathers are extremely soft, and we'll show you a little close-up of his feathers. They have these wonderful little edges on them called thimbrae that help to keep him very quiet if he were to fly at night 
and try to sneak up on his prey. Oh, you can see him panting a little bit. He might be a little warm. I'm gonna turn him around so you can see his beautiful back and tail there. And that's gonna help him to balance if I were to move my hand. That's what they would also use in the wild for balancing and steering when flying. Okay, a little bit more about barred owls and their habitat is they love wooded areas, especially with a mix of deciduous trees and coniferous forests. And they also like to have some water nearby. Barred owls are actually known to hunt frogs as well as other prey. Okay, we do have a population of wild barred owls here at the Nature Center that we have heard occasionally in the evening times or at night when we're doing a night hike. And we have even seen some evidence of wing and talon footprints in the snow last winter outside of Harlan's enclosure, which was pretty cool to see. All right, we, if you did not actually see a barred owl, and you heard a sound at night, it would sound like, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Let's listen. Okay, next, we're gonna learn more about owl pellets and actually get to dissect a pellet from an owl. I really hope that you enjoyed learning about Harlan today and encourage you to come visit the Nature Center sometime. And if you have any other questions, you can always ask one of the staff that are here. Owls, as you may know, are a nocturnal bird of prey that hunt at night and eat things like rodents, such as mice or rats. They can also eat other animals like voles, moles, birds, insects, and even bats. A pellet forms when an owl eats his prey, cannot digest all of his food as he is missing a crop in his body. That's an organ that birds have where they can store food to digest later. So when an owl eats, his food passes through his gizzard and then into the stomach. So things that they cannot digest are the feathers, the fur, and the bones of their prey. Those are gonna form together, and then he will cough that back up a little bit later on. You can sometimes find pellets if you know where an owl roosts at night. I live on an acreage and have found pellets below one of my barns where we had great horned owls roosting, which is pretty cool. Here, we actually do order our pellets. So they come pre-wrapped and disinfected in a piece of foil. When we open that up, you can see what the pellet looks like. And you may even be able to see there are some little pieces of bone sticking out. So we're gonna go through dissecting that here in just a little bit. Here are some other pellets. Sometimes they are different colors depending on the prey that they eat. This one has some partially shown bones and skulls. And here are just pieces of bones that we have found in other pellets previously. We also like to use an identification chart to help us figure out what types of animals our owl ate. So this one shows rodents, shrews, moles, and birds. And you can look at the different types of uh, bones. So obviously skulls, the jaws, that's the lower section of the, from the skull, shoulder blades, the legs, the hips, the hind legs, other types of things would be the ribs, and they're a little bit differently shaped, and other vertebrae and smaller pieces in this um, are caterpillar larva, exoskeletons, types of things. There are lots of different identification charts out there on the internet. This one came from Pellets Inc. where we order our pellets from. And these are bones that we have collected and then just glued on so you can see all of the different types of things that we find. The really small bones are hard to keep. So we usually just keep the skulls, leg bones, hip bones, ribs that are a little bit easier to see.
And obviously this came from a larger mammal. This is probably from a squirrel. So you can see those bones are a little bit bigger than these other ones that are probably from a mouse. So let's go ahead and get started dissecting our owl pellet. An owl pellet is the part that an owl cannot digest from its food. They're gonna eat a variety of rodents, birds, moles, shrews, and other prey, even including things like insects, moths, sometimes even bats. So when they um, can't digest all of that, what we have is a pellet. It's a ball that forms, and then they cough that up later on. The good meaty parts of their food are gonna digest in their stomach and the rest is gonna form in the ball. So this is the fur, the bones, the feathers of any of their prey that collects. We order pellets from Pellets Inc. Um, we get them on the internet. They come wrapped in foil and we are gonna pull those apart. So all of you in class today, if you have a pellet, you can unwrap your pellet from the foil. You can use gloves if you feel a little more comfortable. There are no germs or bacteria in our pellet though because they have been cleaned from that. So when I dissect my pellet, I just use my fingers or fingernails to gently pull apart. Um, other helpful materials are toothpicks or tweezers if you really feel a little more comfortable or easier to use to kind of pull those apart. Um, so you can see here as I pull my pellet, the fur stretches and comes apart. I see some orange in my pellet. So that right there tells me I have some rodent teeth because all rodents have orange or yellow teeth. As I roll here, kind of gently pull it apart, I am uncovering a skull. What are you guys finding over there? So here, using the toothpicks kind of helps you get into some of these smaller places of your skull or your bones. So here's the top part of my skull and here's the bottom jaw. I can see that orange tooth there and you can see how that comes apart. If I flip it over, I can see the teeth here. I'm going to lay that out. Sometimes you have to feel mm -hmm. through the, the fur to actually find the bones because you can't see them because they're so wrapped up. So you kind of have to feel your way through. It's kind of interesting. A lot of times the bottom jaws are pretty intact, mm -hmm. but the, the top part of the skull, like usually the front part is, is fairly intact, but the back where the brain is, that tends to get broken and torn apart because they because our owls like to actually eat the brain there's a lot of good minerals and vitamins in the brain so a lot of raptors will eat the head and the brain first of their prey and then they eat the rest of the body from there 
And all raptors tell it, including our falcons and eagles and hawks. Theirs just are smaller. Um, they have a crop so they can digest um, more of their food than the owls. The owls are missing that part in their body. Critters. Oh, here's a vertebrae. This looks like the sacrum here. Here's our bottom jaws. There's the skull. Here's the teeth. Okay, so here you can see all of the bones that are inside my pellet as I've pulled it open. And then this is where we just want to try and pull them all out of the fur to see what we have. You know, and definitely sometimes um, like when you do the pellets, you'll find, did any of you find more than one skull? You know, it definitely depends on how much they eat of, of what all you will find. So sometimes they'll form a pellet with, you know, say two and a half of their prey or, you know, whatever, it's whatever amount needs to form and then they cough that up. Okay, so here I found, this is the top part of the skull here. If we turn it over, you can see the teeth. Um, here's a tooth that fell out from the upper jaw. These are teeth that fell out also here. This is the lower jaw. These are the two pieces of the lower jaw. These are pieces of the skull that broke off. This would have covered the brain here. These are all rib bones, these really tiny, thin pieces in here. All of these are the different leg bones and hip bones. You can see how they're a little thicker um, and the way they're shaped. And over here, all of these little pieces are the different sections of the vertebrae. And this is... 
like another part of the vertebrae here. It just has a larger opening in comparison. And these are just little itty bitty tiny pieces of bone, um, whether they've broken from the legs or other sections. Sometimes it's difficult to tell what all of your bones are because they do break. You can also find um, the different finger bones. So that might be one of those right in here, these smaller pieces, but these long skinny ones are the ribs. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video learning about Harlan, the Nature Center, and dissecting an owl pellet. If you have any questions, you can always visit the Dorothy Pico Nature Center in Sioux City, Iowa, or contact us through our website or our phone number. Thank you again, and I hope you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.